Mini Motorways is the latest game from the New Zealand developer Dinosaur Polo Club, the team responsible for 2013's Mini Metro. Motorways isn't so much a sequel, but a sister game, focusing on highways instead of railways. In Mini Motorways, your main responsibility is connecting homes to businesses by drawing in new asphalt. New homes and new businesses will pop in over the course of a round, designated by colour, and challenge develops as you juggle these additional balls. In a twist from the original Mini Metro, there is a finite amount of road that can be drawn in during a round. Direct routes aren't always the smartest, and so Mini Motorways challenges you to connect businesses in a cheap yet efficient manner, forcing you to use hairpin turns, cul-de-sacs, and complex intersections. Each round covers a week in your developing metropolises, and every Monday you're given the choice of a new upgrade to quell congestion, just like Mini Metro. Unlike that game, however, you now have the additional consideration between whether to pick extra road tiles or a new piece of infrastructure. Some are based on real-world traffic controls, like stoplights and the much-beloved roundabouts, as well as bridges and tunnels needed to connect through difficult terrain. But there's also the titular Mini Motorways. They don't eat into your road budget, and you can stretch them across your map over existing infrastructure to cut a direct route from one end to another. In the later rounds of Mini Motorways, where colour-coordinated businesses and homes are separated by a maze of intersections, the motorways become a much-needed necessity to your cities. Originally only available through Apple Arcade, Mini Motorways has recently been released on Steam, which is the copy I'm currently reviewing. The transition from touch to pointer controls is seamless, and the additional video options are welcome here. Of course, the question is whether it's worth purchasing at all. Recently, I made a video where I looked at three games that turned city builders into puzzle games. They all instilled a greater appreciation for how our cities operate by turning civil engineering into a game of deduction. Like many motorways, you play all three by placing tiles and are motivated to do so to reach a high score. But Mini Motorways, like Dinosaur Polo Club's first game, separates itself by framing the art of city building around a singular piece of infrastructure. In this case, the motorway. Much like how the arteries and veins in our body connects our most important organs, Mini Motorways focuses on the importance that roads play in connecting our modern world. Even if you can't drive yourself, You've likely ridden on public transport, or eaten food or worn clothes that were delivered via trucks from elsewhere. Motorways are an enormous part of logistics and transportation, and have been for almost a century. Of course, the sheer enormity of that is quite difficult to visualise. However, just like Mini Metro, Mini Motorways succeeds in how it delivers that message. In the previous game, Mini Metro's aesthetics were inspired by Henry Beck's original Underground Tube map, an iconic design that is immediately recognisable, even to people who live outside of Greater London. It's not just a great look to crib from, but solidifies the thesis of Mini Metro. As your own network develops, you see hundreds of little shapes travel across a sprawling map. This is all possible, because you can quickly and clearly understand how all these stations connect. In Mini Motorways, the look of the game takes more after Google or Apple Maps, not just in how the roads look, but also in using iconography like the classic pin to show the destination cars will travel towards, and the highway shield your new motorways generate. Initially, the graphics are somewhat abstract, as you watch little cars travel from block-colour homes to round businesses. But then, as the screen pulls out to reveal more locations, all these shapes better represent a bustling city. Unlike Metro, the more sophisticated art style highlights where problematic intersections appear too. There's no disconnect between the passengers and their vehicle, meaning it's far easier to solve the problem of getting them from their homes to work. And when your cities grow into a spaghetti of roads, you can quickly pause, edit, and resume to create a new solution. It's that readability and allowance to react that solidifies the point of these mini-games from Dinosaur Polo Club. By leaning into the look of travel aids we've developed in the years following the introduction of mass public transit, 
we too can create manageable metropolises. Like Metro, each map is designed around a city famous for its infrastructure. For example, in Mini Motorways you have Los Angeles, whereas in Metro you have New York. Their two coastal US cities where their main means of transport has developed alongside their unique culture. The three islands are densely packed, whereas LA sprawls in all directions. Unlike a more sophisticated city builder, these cultural signifiers don't surface over the course of growing your high score in either games. Rather, they're abstract representations of these places, that take geography into account only to add some flavour to the challenge. That said, the cost of roadways and the building generation in mini motorways does get you to think how many people are dealt a bad hand when existing infrastructure is designed without considering them. More so than Mini Metro, because it's not stations that are being connected, it's homes. All of this is to say then, compared to the three previous puzzling city builders that I evaluated, Mini Motorways is a more contemporary take on the genre. Not just because it's set in the era of cars, but also because its central puzzle of connecting our cities is still an ongoing puzzle we're solving in the real world. The reason I vibe with Mini Motorways more so is that my life has been shaped primarily around the cities I've lived in, that were shaped by roads. Back home they're a mix of laid tarmac over already established trails, as well as fresh asphalt to new builds, creating a chaos of dead ends, country roads and a built up city centre that ultimately led to many businesses leaving the area. For the past few years, however, I've lived in a city that is very much defined by its exceptional congestion control, built from scratch to be a milestone to the rest of the country. As you'd expect, the reason I'm here is that business is thriving due to that ease of transportation. Arguably, my real life experience of driving good and bad roads has fed into my enjoyment of the game, but I think much like the previous game I covered, you don't need to have an engineering degree to play well. It turns a facet of our modern world into a fascinating puzzle that absolutely anyone can enjoy, and like all great mobile games, it doesn't require a lot of your time, but it's very much worth it. You can currently get Mini Motorways for around £7 on Steam, and considering the nearly 7 hours I've put into it since release, I'd say it's a worthwhile investment. It's not a sit down and focus game, but in between writing scripts and whatever else I do on my machine, it's been a nice reprieve for a good few minutes at a time. Of course, you could also get it with an Apple Arcade subscription, which may be the better option, not just because the game was designed for that platform, but because you also get access to all the other great games on the service, some of which I hope to dig into in the future. Until then, let me know in the comments whether Mini Metro has caught your interest. I've been James, and I'll see you all in the next upload.